Cousin Jared, we are back for another week of college football. Later on in the week, more NFL. The joke has been made a lot now that we're now an NFL show. Uh, folks, if you aren't watching the NFL shows, then you are just missing out on all the money yep. in the world, it seems like. I don't even yep. know what else to say yep. about the NFL after another profitable Sunday. It, it seems as if you and, and our friend Jake can do no wrong. It's really wild how well NFL's gone. Um, also good news, our show picks last week in College Football uh, went 11-8, and eight, I think, plus on the show picks. The show picks for college football – on the season are positive. That's fun. Yeah. Um, and the A grade picks didn't do quite as well for us. Cousin Jared, we've talked a lot. So I just kind of want to give a brief, you know, summary of our discussion. We've talked a lot about the spreads this year. College football is wonky. That's what we love about it. Yep. Upsets happen. Uh, we've talked a lot about the money lines being where it's at. And if you follow me on X, Sure. Um, sure. Right. Um, you know, the, the guy who tracks a bunch of different models has shown that sideline is one of the few models that's beaten the spread with regards to straight up winners. And that's kind of what we've talked about. We've got a lot of these wrong team favorites and we had one with New Mexico, uh, on the Saturday show. And that was when we talked about, you know, Hey, wrong team favored. We'd love it. Even if it's a small edge, we'd love it. Take the plus odds on a 50, 50 type game. Yep. And that's been where our bread and butter is. So we've had a, we had a lot of discussion about how to focus in on those and play a little bit less. But it's not that we're like abandoning them, but 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 focus a little bit less, be a little bit more, um, you know, judicious. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thinking about those a little bit harder because those are just a little bit tougher with the bigger spreads. You sometimes got to think about the spots and weather and all sorts of stuff like that. And so just really, how do we how do we maximize the good? Yep. and minimize the bad and or take the bad and weed out the bad so that we can take what's what's good in that in that other bucket. So we've had a lot of discussions about that. Did I, did I summarize it fairly well? Well, yeah, and I would say all of that also applies to totals as yes. well, where we're making picks, you know, five days before the game's being played and we don't know what the weather's going to be like or, you know, you find out some guy, somebody apparently hasn't practiced all week and uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we find that out, you know, six hours before the game yeah. starts. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, yeah. we, everything you just said, we kind of took that approach with totals as well. Yes, and I do remember that last year we had that a lot where we would come out on you know Sunday night yeah. and have this long show, a bunch, bunch of totals, and then by like Wednesday, some dude in the comments is like, oh, it's supposed to be snowing. It's like, we didn't know that three days yeah. ago. <laughs> like, yeah. You're yeah. so much closer now. So yeah, yeah trying to, again, focus on and maximize the good, take the other things that have been maybe a little disappointing, and how do we find what's good still there? So we've done a lot of work. Um Biggest thing is things are going well. I'm really pleased with this model. Uh, I want them to go better. And I'm not going to rest until they're better, which mm. means I'm not going to rest until I die because <laughs> it's yeah. always able to be made better. So that's, yeah. that's how yeah. I feel about this. Yeah. Um, we'll get going here. We've got six college football Saturday games to talk about. All spreads, either dogs or favorites, depending on what we like. We've got an A-grade play for you in the show, and we've got three more picks at the end. We've got the Cousin Jared uh, Mountain West special to wrap us up with, and one of the games in the after show, the extended cut study hall version of the show, is the one that when we started off, you and I both were like, this is the B-grade play that is an A-grade in our hearts. So we've got some good stuff in those last three picks. If you're not with us on Dub Club, that sign-up link is in the show description. It's under a dollar a day. You will get – definitely you will get your bang for your buck with all the stuff between uh, college football, NFL. Most of the A-grades live there, and the A-grades have just been rocking it for us for the most part yep. um, in both sports and college basketball coming soon two weeks away so sign up in the show description and get you those last three i know right it, it, jake yeah. is jake is uh you know salivating basically yeah moment. he's 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 in the cave like preparing yeah. i need to get in the cave i need to get in the cave preparing bring out the model and like dust it off and be like are all my data feeds even like gonna work at this point like who yeah. changed urls like well like and i know that kid palms talked about this too he talked about that first game that's like a noon game is great because it like tests them like all their data feeds are they actually working again this year because mm -hmm. you never know what changes year to year right yeah yeah that, that's exactly right you know i feel like i know a lot about college football but then jake can like list off who's scrimmaging <sighs> each other in college basketball and it's yeah. just like he's he's on another with, level so. with three times as many teams yeah um, yeah anyway hopefully I'll, I'll let you all handle that exclusively until after the new year <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, hopefully that was entertaining for y'all. Either way, though, we'll move on. Noon Eastern, UMass and Army. Folks, y'all wanted some bad football, so we are going to – UMass and Army is going to be some bad football. I've got UMass dead last. Army, Army's not bad. Despite what you might have seen yeah. – yeah. Or what you might have started to see and then turned off the channel and discussed. That was yeah. me. Yeah. Um against LSU. We got the over, barely, <laughs> yeah. by the hair yeah. of our chinny chin chin, at least on that one. Yeah. Army's a better team than that. Uh, and UMass is nowhere near LSU. LSU's playing some better football now. They're really turning it around too. LSU and Florida are two teams that looked a little bit rough early on and are kind of like, you know, Tennessee as well. You know, a couple of these teams looked a little bit rough at times early and are turning around. Maybe Alabama, right? And a lot of these, yep. you know, yep. maybe playing a little better now. LSU's one of them, right? UMass yep. is no LSU. UMass defense is like on another planet, which is what drives them to last place. Model says Army by 15.6. Army minus nine is a B grade. Cousin Jared, what you got for us? Despite what you may have thought coming into the week, um, LSU's defense is substantially better than UMass's. It, it, you may not have thought that uh, based on everything that you've seen from LSU this season, but UMass is the worst defense. Like there are very few things that I can just tell from my my naked eye. Like the I, I need sideline to kind of differentiate, you know, things for me. I didn't need sideline to tell me UMass was the worst defense in, in college football. It's terrible. Um, and so what I will say is, grab this at nine, obviously. That's what we're telling you to do. But I think uh, maybe even more so than like 10, I think 10 and a half or, ele- or 11 are going to be your your key numbers mm-hmm. here because I don't think Army's going to kick a field goal. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that UMass mm-hmm. may, kick, may kick one, maybe. Uh, but then, you know, that's going to turn, you know, push at 11 uh, or, you know, if it ends up being a relatively close game or win yeah. at 10 and a half as opposed yep. to, the, to the nine. I don't think 10 is necessarily as important in this game uh, because – Army's going to go for it on fourth down. UMass is going to be more than happy to give up chunks of yardage at a time. Um, you know, Army, great bounce back spot. Could not ask for a better spot coming off of, of that shellacking at, at LSU. Uh, UMass will be more than happy to, to give give up a few points uh, this coming Saturday. Yeah, a, a couple of notes off of that. First off, UMass did have a bye last week, so they've had an extra week to prepare for the triple option. UMass's defense is so bad. I don't really think it matters. Like, yeah, you know, hey, Baylor took their bye week and decided to completely remake their offense, but they've actually got some talented players. They were underperforming and massively disappointing to alum like myself and fans mm-hmm. and people who backed them. But they had some talent. Like UMass, like they're just not gonna have the talent. Like we know that, right? So it's not right. like you can. And remaking an offense at least changes your identity. Like I don't know how you really remake a defense prepping for a triple option. Like I mean you can kind of shift zone man type stuff, but like against a triple option, like it doesn't really matter as much, you know, the triple options, a whole different beast. And so they probably spent a lot of time this last week trying to figure out how to stop that, but I'm not, I'm just not sure it matters. I think where we went wrong in the army LSU game, thinking that army could put up some points is that LSU's defense has at times really struggled. And I think that's the key at times they've looked good a lot better at mm-hmm. Mississippi state. They only allowed 14 and Mississippi state's offense hasn't been that good, but if mm-hmm. LSU's defense was as bad as maybe I think yeah. they thought they, they should have given up more points there. Yep. So we give up 31 to Arkansas. Arkansas has been up and down, but again, if they were as bad as we thought they would have given up 41 or 51, yep. they struggled against Ole Miss, Missouri. Absolutely. But they held Auburn down and Auburn's not a good offense as well. So I think we yep. kind of missed that LSU's defense has done better against weaker offenses mm-hmm. and has just struggled against the really good ones. Um, kind of thought the triple option would get them, Missed that, but again, LSU's defense at least has some bright spots for sure and can handle weaker offenses where UMass just can't. Yeah, I, I think uh, you mentioned the bye week for uh, UMass. I think if anything, that may right now sideline has a small edge towards the under in this game. I think the bye week would would give me more pause if I wanted to take the under in this game because I think mm. if UMass, uh, you know, that bye week was going to manifest itself in any way, maybe UMass gets an extra, you know, point or two boost because they're able to install something on offense that's mm. going to throw Army off in like the first quarter or something like that. Um, I think UMass's defense is, for the most part, beyond, beyond hope. hope. Yeah, beyond hope. Yeah, um, I still don't like it there. I did not see that coming. Uh, sticking with terrible football, UConn and Boston College. Chris and Jared, beautiful pick by you, my friend, on Boston ah, College. Thank you. Thank you. Plus, plus 180 Yep. Uh, as a B grade against a Georgia Tech team that that I've been here saying is overrated. Um, we kind of nailed that would be a coin toss type game. Um, sure enough, that's how it played out. Boston College at those plus odds was the right side. 
uh, it's always fun when the right side pays off. Sometimes you have the right side and it just, it just doesn't work out for you. That one worked out for us. Mm -hmm. We were on BC last week. We're actually going to be on UConn this week, though. Plus 13 is an A grid pick. Model says these teams are closer than they should be. Uh, Cousin Jared, I think this is the thing we always preach with A grades. Model is probably a little bit too high on UConn, yeah. but even if it's off by a handful of points, this should really be more like Boston College by seven, mm -hmm. you know, eight, not 13. So we're getting some pretty good value here. Um, best unit on the field will absolutely be Boston College's offense, but both of these defenses are bad enough. Like, talk about some bad football here. I think we're getting a nice value play here. Similar to Army. Army coming off a terrible game. It's a nice bounce back spot. UConn didn't look great last week. BC beat Georgia Tech. I think this is a classic. People are high on one team, low on the other team. But as we're always talking about, you're never as good as, you're, as you look at your yeah. best and you're never as bad as you look at your worst. Cousin Jared, UConn plus 13. Yeah. Check out. I feel like this is actually a, a very similar analysis to what I had when I picked BC against Georgia Tech. Mm -hmm. uh, in that game, it felt like there wasn't anything materially different between uh, BC and Georgia Tech. Uh, I, here, I think there is a little bit of difference between Boston College and UConn, uh, but not 13 points worth. And especially the way that UConn uh, has been able to, to hang in games this year. Really, the only game they got blown out uh, was against Duke, they hung in there with, with NC State. Uh, they lost by one to Utah State, beat Rice, hung in there with South Florida last week. So UConn's just – we saw this last year too. Like mm -hmm. this year it's not manifesting in as many wins as it did last year, but like UConn never seems to give up. Like mm -hmm. they rarely let a game totally get out of hand. They are in most games in the fourth quarter, and I think that's going to be the exact same way with with uh, Boston College. And Boston College, same way, uh, until mm -hmm. the Georgia Tech game – had problems putting teams away uh, this year. So, yeah, I think this is just too many points. BC is a little bit better. Give them home mm -hmm. field advantage. Maybe this should be, you know, says BC by – Sideline says BC by 4.7. Let's just say it should be closer to like seven. six or seven. Yeah, six yeah. or seven. Still getting a lot of uh, value here, in my opinion, with the UConn team that finds a way to hang in most every game. I think it's a great point that UConn is probably being a little bit disrespected by the market because the wins aren't there like they were last year. But mm -hmm. when you look at it, this team isn't any different than last year's team. Both teams were very mediocre, you know, or, or excuse me, last year's team was very mediocre for the fact that they, that yeah. they made a bowl game, right? They weren't yep. that good. They just played close games, played bad teams, and they happened to win a few of them this year. They're playing close games and playing bad teams. And, they aren't. Yeah. and they're not winning. They're losing them by one score. And you saw that yeah. last week, you know, at home, they lost to South Florida by a field goal. They yeah. lost at home to Utah State in a game they really should have had, I felt like, by a point, you know. Um, it, 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 the only blowout was to Duke. Duke's a whole different world, especially yeah. when they're healthy. A yeah. whole different <laughs> team than Boston yeah. College. Kudos to Boston College. We loved backing them last week. Uh, but again, I do love taking a team that's just the opposite of what they looked like last week because we tend to get an extra point or two of value. Is that going to matter in this game? Don't really know. But if we do that across 10 games, it's probably going to swing us in one of the 10. And that could be the difference between a, a losing and a winning week or, or, or yep. an okay and a good week or a good and a great week, right? That extra yep. game that we flip just because we're getting an extra point of value or when we talk about money lines. On yep. tomorrow's show, an extra twenty cents or thirty cents or whatever of value. Yep, and, and according to to uh, the website where I'm looking at these schedules here, uh, you can get in to see this game. Tickets as low as seven dollars, so <laughs> plenty of seats available for UConn and Boston College. Yeah, that's that's not surprising. Uh, short short trip for UConn, of course, which yeah, helps. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. weather. I don't know if the weather's going to be concerned. We'll find out as we get closer, but we're getting to that time of year too, where uh, it could be not many people in the stands because the weather's just cold and people are like that. Ah, I just don't want to go. Yeah, watch crappy football. Yeah. Um, a game that might have a few more people at it. Indiana and Penn State. Penn State coming off of, you know, a heartbreaking loss. Kind of, kind of not. I mean, they weren't really ever in that game. The scoop and score aside, yeah. Um, the penalty on that, you know, was unfortunate for them, and that, you know, you could question did it really affect the play? That was still a penalty, of course. Had that not happened. Is that game different? Maybe. Otherwise, they weren't really in that game. Ohio State nope. came in was the better team. I heard a lot of rumblings about Penn State was so concerned all season about not running up the score that they wasted opportunities in games to work on things to make their offense even better and didn't get a guy like Jarrell or all those snaps. 
that affected them against Ohio State because the offense was just behind where they should have been. Their defense is fantastic, and you can see that on screen still ranked number three. Their offense has taken quite a hit. Allers dropped out of the top 20 in quarterbacks, not looking as strong as he did early on. But here's the thing. Penn State blows out conference opponents, not named Ohio State Michigan. We said it last year and rode that. We've said it this year because we have rules around here. The rule is Penn State's not playing Ohio State or Michigan. You lay it with Penn State, yeah, and you don't yeah. really care. Indiana's terrible model says Penn State by 33.1. We are going to lay 31. I like getting this now at 31 just because they might win by 31. I don't know. I mean, 31, 35. You know, if we lose at 28, 27, there's a lot of numbers that are possible. 31 is on in the reasonable possible numbers. So that push protection there is valuable. It's a C-grade model. doesn't love the value, but... The model hasn't loved the value laying the points with Penn State for the last 365 days. But if you just followed take Penn State in Big Ten games against not Ohio State, Michigan, it doesn't matter if you love the value or not. You've been yep. making yep. banks. So we're going to try that again. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I saw somewhere that like Penn State wasn't just the conference games. Like from the mm. Ohio State game last season until the Ohio State game this season, mm. they covered every game. Uh, wow. and, and so, yeah, it, it was really I- impressive. Uh, yeah, a- everything you said, and even if there's a little bit of a letdown here, you look at Indiana's offense, uh, mm-hmm. ranked number 112, going against Penn State's defense, which is uh, ranked number three. How, how, how are they going to score? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like this game could be, you know, Penn State could come out flat. It could be 0-0 at the end of first quarter, and I would be like, still probably going to cover this game just because I don't know if Indiana is going to score more than zero or three or seven points. So yeah, uh, yeah si- sign me up. This is, this is one where you could say, Hey, this is a bad spot for Penn state. I'd agree. Potential letdown spot. Um, but we've just seen, this is what Penn state does. They kind of just crush everybody. We've got almost two years of data at this point. They crush everybody. Who's not Ohio state, Penn state. And Michigan. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I think they played Michigan at home this year which I've heard people talking about, hey, they've got a chance to do the whole merry-go-round, everybody beat everybody. Of course, the issue is that Michigan just appears to be, you know, not just playing the villain, but but being, (laughs) you know, the the villain that at the end of the movie wins. And you're like, well, that was disappointing. Um, But that aside, um, when you look at the potential letdown spot that, that I know you mentioned, other people kind of might mention the same thing. The reason we don't play narratives and the reason we mostly try to ignore them is I can make just as much of a case that this is a, I'm pissed off after what happened and we got to get back to work business, like mm-hmm. figure this stuff out so that we can beat Michigan and not have the same thing happen when Michigan comes to our place later on in the season. So, you know, I think I, you know, you could almost make a case you'd be more worried had they won that game rather than lost. I don't know what's yep. going to happen. And that's my whole point with all of this talk is we don't know the narrative. We're not in the locker room unless you are, or know someone who is, it's really hard to assess that. And if you're trying to figure out narratives on these things, my hunch is you're probably going to be 50, 50 on it. You're going to get some of them right, some of them wrong because you're just guessing at stuff. Yep. We don't know what the narratives, we don't know what the motivation is. What we do know is Penn state's got a legit defense. They've been covering conference games, even non-conference games. I don't see how Indiana scores. You can make a case that this Indiana offense team is you know, on the same level as these Penn state as the teams at Penn state has shut mm. out this year. They, they yeah. shut out Iowa and they shut out UMass and Honestly, that seems like about the same tier of offense that Indiana has. Like, I'm not sure they're going to score. They might get a field goal. They might get lucky with a big play, but like they might not score, right? I mean, 0-3-7 yeah. are, are three very possible numbers for Indiana, which means Penn State doesn't have to score too much to cover this number. Yep, yep. I Exactly. That That's, yeah. I completely agree with you. Yeah. Uh, that's our show for the free, three free picks. Join us more after the music on Dub Club. Um, again, sign up link in the show description cost under $1 per day. You get a lot of stuff, got a lot of info, a lot of cheat sheets, a lot of, if you want to be a smarter, better, be more informed, reference other things, all sorts of goodies. Cousin Jared, any parting words before we get our 30 second water break? Since I'm not part of the NFL show, I got to spend my Sunday afternoon watching the Taylor Swift movie in theaters. And let me tell you, you get your money's worth. Uh, quite a, a lengthy experience. Uh, but yeah, seeing my, my daughter run up and down the, the aisles and, and singing Shake It Off, it, it, it was worth it. So yeah, if you want to go, I think you get your money's worth. I mean, as someone who loves Taylor Swift uh, myself, then, uh, you know, I, I can't I can't believe I haven't seen it already, I guess. Is that, I yeah. Think, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, hopefully we will see you after the music with us on our extended cut show in 30 seconds. <laughs> 